Welcome to Nourishing the Mother, an inspired conversation space between Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner on the journey of motherhood through the common thread of parenting, relationship and sexuality as a path to consciousness. We keep our conversations honest, our experiences real and our philosophies exploratory. We believe that in order to raise incredible humans, we first have to raise ourselves. We know that in order to rock the family, you've got to nourish the mother. If you are here, you care about paving a path of conscious and intentional motherhood, connected with yourself and your gifts, and also illuminating your children in theirs so we may raise more whole humans who can impact this world in a more humane way. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively, head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And for all live streamed pre-release podcasts and all our free content, head over to our free Facebook group, Nourishing the Mother with Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner. We are Julie Tenner and Bridget Wood, and we are so grateful you're here. Hello and welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I am Bridget Wood. And I'm Julie Tenner. And today's podcast is 10 Ways Motherhood is Making You an Exceptional Entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. So this is often a conversation that Bridget finds herself in and occasionally one that I find myself in, but it is totally worth us diving into the genius and the way in which Bridget sees the world and you and me and motherhood and how it is of such value in setting us up for the rest of our lives rather than somehow being a pause from it. Mm. It's such a great conversation to have because I think the social construction of motherhood is kind of, you know, this place where you just spend a few years and you kind of put the brakes on your career and like you're not really doing much except caretaking and it tends to be typically minimized but what my hope is with this podcast is that we can start to see the enormous genius and skills and adaptability that you're creating in your motherhood so that you can build your self-worth mm. um, and see that even though it might not be necessarily valued out there in the world in the same way that some you know, high-flying business person entrepreneur is being perceived, but that many of the skills and ways of thinking that you're adopting are really, really entrepreneurial in nature. Mm. Mm. Let's dive in. Yeah, let's dive in. Point number one is our ability to pivot. Yeah. So how often, like you might have a plan for your day and then a kid's sick at school the the way that you're going to do sleep with your child's not working. So you're constantly looking for how can I make this work? Is there a better way? How can I balance each person's needs in this house? How can I get my needs met as well? What's my bigger picture for, you know, our family? And so you're never stagnant. You're never just, you know, treading water or coasting in your motherhood. You're being asked to constantly look at, you know, how can I adapt here in a way that works for everybody? How can I still fulfill this person's needs or wants or desires, but in a different way since that's not going to work now? We have to do this pivot. Mm -hmm. And that is what makes, you know, an entrepreneur different from the person who gets handed a task and follows things, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's and having to be managed closely by someone to get something done. That is not how it works in motherhood. You're on your own. The landscape is yours to create to a degree. You have a lot of choice if you come from a level of privilege in terms of the school that you might send your child to or how you want to spend your days or what extracurriculars you put them in or how you set up your morning so that you can be the mother that you want to be. There is this depth and breadth of choice that we don't always recognise that we have. Mm -hmm. That's entrepreneurial. 
It is. And I always say just the ability to hold the emotional tension point that pivoting yes. requires that you do. It is actually an emotional growth point mm. because instead of going, chucking a, you know, childhood tantrum and going, ah, but I want it to be this way and it should mm. be this way and all of you are doing it wrong, is being able to go, okay, the scene's just changed. How do I adapt? How do I move? How do I shift things so that this is functional and back in alignment? And it could be even that you had a whole plan for your day. And then all of a sudden that plan is completely derailed by one thing or another. And now you've got to completely rejig everything, but still end up at everybody's fed and in bed. Yes. So you know, and, and the hallmark of an entrepreneur is that you have this vision, but you don't always know exactly how you're going to get there. Mm. and that you don't necessarily know who's going to come in on that path and help provide you with the tools. That's what we're doing consciously or unconsciously in motherhood too is that we're, you know, energetically sending out these messages to the communities of women that we know that we're going to vibe with and help create what we want for our families with. We are tapping into the professionals that we know can take us where we need to go. We're kind of sending out these energetic kind of feelers to bring to us what we value and what we vision. Yeah. Even though we don't necessarily have the solid plan for it or, you know, the set of instructions that someone's given us, that's like super adaptable and entrepreneurial because you're being pulled by something greater than you and you're holding that in your line of sight while being willing to pivot, knowing you're going to have to pivot, on your path to getting there. And while you're pivoting, bringing your higher conscious mind and your body regulation with you, mm. like that is the art of it. Yeah. It? And, and this is what, and even like I think about this and I think about like mothering work is not just the things that you do with your children. It's that mental load. It's that the home that you um, create for them and the nervous system work in that is sometimes enormous, particularly when you're coming from a place of re-patterning mm -hmm. from a, an early experience. And the energy that it can take to do that work is so largely unseen, but yet so fundamental to the outcome that you want. Mm -hmm. totally. And it's a complete mindset shift from a mainstream way of parenting, which is simply just regurgitating how you were parented totes yeah so point number two is risk so you have to be inherently willing to take risks mm. you know in entrepreneurship there's no guarantees there's no paycheck that's going to keep you safe and keep you stable you're constantly having to try things fail at them learn from failing at them this is relationship with our children mm. This is being in the wings with our children when they try new things mm -hmm. and handing over that trust with them and navigating our feelings and their feelings and letting them have their experience and parenting ourselves through their experience and, you know, navigating our world to support that for them. Mm. Like that can feel really risky in our bodies when we take leaps like that that, and not, you know, something that we come from. Mm, mm. The other thing I always find so interesting to ponder on when it comes to risk is that often people who are risk adverse, and it can be financially risk adverse, and I would say in the work that I see the most is from a heart perspective, risk adverse to mm. go first to do the thing without someone have already given you something first, but to be the first person to give or the first person to step forwards or the first person to break down the wall or the vulnerability or whatever. Mm. So risk, risking your heart, risking your money, risking whatever, right, is that so much of it that we perceive we're losing is ego. You're yeah. really only risking your ego. You're risking this, the, what you perceive to be the safety of the identity that you currently have. Like you're risking how you how you perceive yourself or how others are going to perceive you, what you perceive to currently own versus not own. Yeah. It, it's it's all like ego. It, it well, it seems solid, but it's not. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like it's like risk really is being <clears throat> to take the leap before you're ready. Yeah. Knowing, you know, you could be the one that ends up with pie in their face. 
That could happen. You yeah. face rejection. You face ridicule. Mm. But they're all ego-based experiences. Yeah. So and I just ego-based, and we say ego-based in the sense of like the part of you that it's attached to who you are. Yes. The part of you that is believes you are some kind of particular creation right now that you cannot risk. Yeah, that you can't let that go. Yeah. Or that if you do, it will result in, you know, an inextric- inextricable pain and mm. suffering, mm. which is what the ego wants you to believe, right? Because then you'll never ask it to die and it gets to keep yeah. you in the shell that you're in. Yeah. So just risk, being risk adverse and risk friendly. I love that we can use the platform of relationship to do that. So in here, our motherhood, that we're using the platform of risk with our children in can I trust them in their mission, even when it doesn't align with my values? Can I risk my own ego and sense of identity yeah. in order for them to do be, have that thing? Which is, which is some of the biggest work, right? Like I, I love that we're saying this because you will realise to the degree to which you hold on or attach to who you think they need to be. Exactly. Which is about you though. Yeah, that's right. You, but with that, you realise, ah. Oh, I'm now getting a sense of where I stop and they begin and I'm trying to infringe upon where they begin with my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like I just find this such an interesting, interesting pondering. Like I'm not saying we have any answers for it, but it's an interesting pondering Mm. to consider how comfortable you are with risk and what is it that you're really risking? And can you give it all? Like, can you give your whole heart? Can you give your of your resources? Can you give of everything you've built in your life so far to mothering without expectation of this child to be anything? To return. To return to you. Yeah. Right? Which, I mean, people who are really well-versed in entrepreneurship expect that businesses will fail, that there'll be great losses and that that's part of, yeah. it's part of life. Yeah. But that if we come to our mothering with this attitude of, well, I'm going to do all of these things and my child's going to be this, we're setting ourselves up for such disappointment mm-hmm. because we're attached to the outcome, not being with the process. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to an entrepreneur the other day, a dad, And um, he was saying just this, just this, that he was talking about his big vision and all of the risks that he and they as a couple and a family were making financially and all of the other ways in order to achieve this huge vision. And what I loved about it was he was like, how could I not? Like, what's the point? I don't want to do what my parents did. And which is just, you get the job, you do the job, you stay in your safety zone, you pay the mortgage and, you know, you retire one day. I don't, I don't want to live that. Mm. What's the worst thing that happens? I live my life. I'm going to use my words in full color, all of the ways that I want to do it, achieving and, and feeling and being present in all of the ways that I want to be. And then what happens? Worst case scenario, it doesn't work. It comes crumbling down. I fail and I fuck it up completely and royally. What happens? We just go back to renting a home and I'm back in my job as a chef being paid a wage. Like, is that the worst that can happen? We're both willing to take that risk. Yeah. You know, courageous. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So you are constantly practicing risk and how you're balancing and holding again, your own emotional intelligence and regulation in risk, Mm -hmm. in your parenting, in your everyday, you're asking yourself continuously to meet those edges, which do pay off in terms of being able to take big leaps and back yourself because that is a risk. Mm. Yeah, so powerful. Number three is to adjust expectations. Mm. So this builds a little bit on last week's podcast in in many ways to be looking at the expectations that we have of ourselves, of our capacity in this particular season or, you know, day of our children and, you know, what's theirs, what's ours, what are we projecting upon them? And, you know, in, in, in any kind of business endeavor, any kind of entrepreneurial endeavor, you're constantly working that edge of like relating to the person, the thing, how we negotiate that. And, in our mothering of our children and of our, you know, vision for our mothering, it's really, really similar. 
you know, how can I manage those expectations? Look at what they really are. Are they reasonable? Are they unreasonable? Can I work with this person in front of me to be more clear about them? Right? Can I bring more of myself here and lay it all out so that I'm not hiding anything? So that I'm bringing, you know, all of the parts of myself to my mothering, much like, you know, the entrepreneur who's, you know, perhaps like a, an influencer or, or some kind of um, they are their business, they're willing to, to reveal all of themselves. Mm. And in doing that, be more able to be, meet people and be met. Mm. When we can reveal all of ourselves with our children and be more authentic, it can be scary because we weren't taught as children that our parent, for our parents to be authentic with us. But in us doing that, what walls do we break down? What old systems do we no longer have to participate in? What do we get to create that's new, that's more alive? And also completely sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because it's exhausting trying to perform a persona. Right. And it will trip you up eventually. Yeah, it will. Like just like you want to be able to be all of yourself with your children and them and through that learn to love all of yourself so that they can learn to love all of you too. In business, you know that whatever you try to hide, the bigger you get or the more influential you get, that's going to come back to bite you. Mm. So how much of yourself can you bring? Mm. Mm. This podcast is brought to you by the offers we currently have on in our world. So over at Bridgetwood.life, you can find out more about the Reimagining Motherhood membership. It's the place where conscious parenting and the whole woman collide to empower you in motherhood. And you yours. Over at JulieTenner.love is the online couples workshop experience. It's 12 dates that you join from the comfort of your bedroom or lounge room, cameras off guided by me over a 12 month experience. So one date at the beginning of each month that inspires the support and the change that you can create in the rest of your month. So it's a set it and forget it healthcare system for your relationship. You can find out more at julietenner.love. Number four is to lead yourself in the face of there being no support, to go your own way and Mm. come back to your own voice. Yeah. So when you're doing mothering, perhaps in a way that's different or pioneering in your lineage, um, it's perhaps something that you haven't seen before, there's a lone path that Mm -hmm. you need to walk for a while until you find your people. Yeah. Similar to the entrepreneurial path where if you feel pulled by a vision that no one else you know shares, no one else you know can take over from that, it is your own. That too asks you to back yourself, to support yourself even in, you know, the naysayers, Mm. right? Like, you know, think back to like the conversations we've had about home birth and like no one in my sphere who I love and who has loved me all my life was supportive of that. Yeah, no. But can I, but can I still back that? Mm. Yeah, I fucking can. Because I have a vision bigger and a why bigger than the opinions of anybody else. Mm, it's so potent, isn't it? Yeah. So tell me that's not entrepreneurial. No, it is. I just am really like breathing yeah. and feeling it in my body. <laughs> Right? Like, and this is where it grows us. This is where leaning into these desires that we have that we cannot explain, but that we know we need to trust, Mm. is building incredible skills that are transferable across every area of life. Totes, right. And when a woman speaks her voice from that place of authenticity and leading in her own way in her own life, just always think, you know, it rights an ancient wrong every time. You know how there's like that, that saying of, you know, every time a child says they don't believe a fairy dies somewhere, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like every time a woman speaks her voice with truth and authenticity and backs herself because it's so wholesomely grounded in who she be and she can't not, it rights an ancient wrong somewhere on that lineage is a spark that, of a wound that just disappeared. Yes. Yeah, you know. 
I just it's, like, like, it's like that I see like an almost energetic line of like her lineage that's all kind of like um rocky and hilly and like kind of tension filled and it just kind of straightens it out yeah you know when you pull that it's almost like you pull the thorn out it's like oh no, that one's gone now yeah yeah it's, that, that's clear that energy is clear now truth yeah mm. uh number six adaptable mm. I think we kind of touch on this earlier but constantly and like I don't know if I feel like, like I, seriously <laughs> <laughs> you and I we because you came over and visited me recently and we were like looking adoringly at my puppy at the same time as going holy fuck puppies are so full on yeah like and just seeing how much we all have to adapt to a puppy who weighs on the floor and who grabs the kids clothes and who steals shoes and who chews stuff it shouldn't like that what that adds to the energy of a home where you're already constantly having to pivot and adapt if we see that as an upskilling process that is, you know, resilience building and that kind of, you know, how we talk about you stress versus distress and mm-hmm. you stress has been good for us. What if we were to look to the skills and the capacity that mothering is asking us to build as positive adaptations mm. that then give us the belief, the fortitude, the capacity to take that adaptability to other places so our nervous system moves into these new areas of life with less shutdown, with more a sense of I've got this and hello, a whole new set of skills in a new area of life I didn't even know I wanted to progress in. Mm -hmm. That adaptability serves you. Mm. Yeah, totally. And just the fluidity with which mothers do that constantly Mm. actually blows my mind. Yeah, and not flinching often. I mean, it is okay to flinch and it is okay to get shitty at like the things you have to do sometimes. But also sometimes your brain has made that like adaptation quicker than you've had the chance to feel frustrated with it, right? And you've already, yeah, mapped that out into 5,000 steps. Yeah. The other thing I would say that just occurred to me then as we were saying that is for all of our listeners who perceive that they are hard or hardened Mm -hmm. by motherhood, here is an example of where you flow yeah yeah like where your mindset flows Mm. where you're like no longer taking this rigid position and it has to be this way like and you're like throwing the tantrum if it changes Mm. no you're flowing with the decisions all of the time with finding solutions all of the time Mm. yeah it's amazing Mm. number seven time management yeah right like I love after laugh and you I talk about this too like you think you're like busy or you look back at yourself before you had children and you thought you like were busy or you thought you had a lot on and then you like become a mother and you're like "Ah, that was nothing and you were talking to this point too what was your like well I just think I just love that saying of in order to get something done you give it to a busy person Mm. Right. Because, I, because I know how to manage time. They know how to manage it. And beyond that, mother's time becomes so precious because it mm-hmm. is spread so thinly across so many needs and demands of her with all of her different hats that she becomes incredibly proficient at being efficient. Yeah. So the shit a mother can get done in 20 minutes while a kid naps yeah is worth eight hours of what you probably used to do pre-kids yeah and this I mean this is a product of a universal law which says that the um time expands to fill no the task the task expands to fill the time you've given in yeah so you give yourself a short amount of time to get something done you're gonna get it done right because you haven't given yourself all the time in the world there is no time it's now or it's never so pick which are you choosing I mean you Bridgie Bridgie you and I have built our entire businesses upon this yeah we have never built our businesses on the premise of childcare. no not at any stage it's around nap times. It's around, you know, the occasional day when someone can watch our children. It's night times. It's morning. Mornings. It's weekends. It's, yeah. it's when it's, you're around. It, it's, it's not perfect because it has to get done. It's, so we're not spending forever on the perfectly polished no. podcast, which, you know, if you're a regular listener, there's stuff that happens. 
But we believe that in revealing that, it gives you permission to do it your way. Right. And what to not wait for perfect. What can't you do with 20 fucking minutes? Yeah. I know. Even like we had a little break between recording podcasts and I was like, okay, make this phone call, make that payment, quick do these notes here. Right. That was seriously 20 minutes because I had to go and pick up my daughter. This, this is life. What did you get done? So my daughter's going for surgery next week. So I had to pay for the surgery. So I did that quickly. I um, transferred the notes of the podcast that we just made. I um, heated up some bone broth to drink, which I'm drinking right now. I finished mopping the floors because my puppy did a wee. What else did I do? I think that was about it. But that felt like pretty good for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So in that 20 minutes, I picked my daughter up, ran to the supermarket to get the shit I needed for dinner and the couple of things that we'd run out of, got back home, put a load of washing on, sorted her out and was back here with you. So good. Like <laughs> minutes what can't you do with it the shit Bridgie and I have done over the years with our business in 20 Mm. minutes yeah would blow your mind and even like even the the things that you can do when you join up with other women like the time you know the amount of stuff that you and I have organized or planned or done together when our kids have been playing yeah. Right, because like, sometimes we can also think, well, I can't work or I can't organize that because I've got my kid all day. But well, you do, but also they're off playing, or you can have a friend over and they can play together, and you can each share a bit of time to get your life admin or your work done. Like there are ways. Yeah. But I think sometimes in our overwhelm, we forget that creative approach to asking, how can I get more time? Yeah. Even or how can I get more of what I need? Yes, and even showing up on socials, like, that does not have to be hard. I am not someone, you tell me if it's different for you, Bridge, I don't think it is, Mm -hmm. but I'm not someone who spends an entire day crafting a perfectly well-orchestrated series of posts and then spends an hour and a half per post designing it. I'm like, I've got five minutes while I'm sitting down to grab a drink. Boom, better get it done. Yeah, I just simply don't have that time. So it has to get done and it has to be imperfect. And I'm okay with that. Five minutes is all any of my posts take me because I Mm -hmm. refuse to spend more than that on it because I do not have it. Yeah. So you are a mofo when it comes to time management and what business does not want that because time management is everything Mm -hmm. in productivity. And you're also extremely discerning. Like I think too, um, certainly what's worthy of your time? What's worthy of your time? You Mm -hmm. can, you can, you start to go, and this is what I found increasingly hard when I was um, still working corporate as a mother you know, the projects that I'd be working on that I knew weren't going to get off the ground Mm. and how hard it is to justify time spent on what you know is a waste. Yeah, yeah. You start to become incredibly discerning about what you spend your time on, who you spend your time with and the value of your time because you know how easily consumed it can be by the needs of others. Yeah. And so that you become a more protective force around it. Yes. Which is self-worth as well, which is what I hope that this podcast helps you reclaim within yourself because when we have low self-worth and we don't value our time, we allow it to be consumed by others and directed by others. Totally, 100%. Number eight is that you are able to hold a big vision without Mm -hmm. crumbling and crushing that you don't have it right now on this day. Because how big is your vision for your kids? Huge. Right. So you just show up because the bigger your vision, the less the day-to-day wobbliness can get to you. Mm. You expect the hurdles. Mm. And you find joy in the everyday Mm. on your path to achieving the big vision. That is law of attraction. Yeah. And that also because you are leaning into something so big and learning so much as you lean into something so big, you invariably expect yourself to fumble Mm. and so when we apply that same lens to the grace we want to give ourselves in business when we fumble because we're we're learning something you're going to make mistakes we also want to give ourselves that same grace in mothering Mm. when we fumble Mm. and in fact see the richness in relationship when we fumble yeah but not collapsing and giving up on the big vision Mm. Like just want you to, to see that you have such a big vision for your child and it feels inspiring and your heart aches for it and it inspires you to show up today. 
That's how you can live your life. That's how entrepreneurial businesses live theirs. Yeah. Not only do you have big vision, but you also, step nine is you have the ability to create small steps and achievable goals and break the big vision down into micro moments like a mofo. Mm. And this is what, this is the panacea to overwhelm, Mm. is being able to not get stuck looking up at the mountain and going, oh, my God, but instead look at your feet and the next step. Mm. And that's where, you know, we challenge the feelings of depletion because instead of looking at what's so overwhelming, we can instead go, oh, okay, what's my vision? Okay, how is this part of it? All right, next step. You know, and then when we feel like we're at a crossroads, what is the next right step? Mm. Who can I bring in to support me here? Mm. Are my expectations realistic here? Do I need a different way of looking at this? Mm. Mm. I always think the actionable steps and the ability to goal set is literally what stops you from flailing into Mm -hmm. achieving. Mm -hmm. It's all it is, is the ability to take the big thing and chunk it down into all of the small things. And if you know that's not your genius and put it around you, but I'll bet that's what you're doing in your everyday, Mm -hmm. in your mother. But you're probably just, sometimes we, we do that, but we're not conscious of the way that we do it. And so we say we don't do it. Because it might not look like, you know, the project plan or the Gantt chart or the like, you know, perfectly polished calendar. It might look like your own bespoke process. And so look like a wholesome meal. Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. you want your child to know health. It could look like asking their permission when you change their nappy because you want them to know body autonomy. Mm. It could look like stopping what you're doing and getting down and saying, tell me what you're feeling or tell me what's going on for you Mm. and listening because you want them to know that they're worthy of being listened to and responded to. So you are still taking a big vision and chunking it into mini, micro, small, everyday actionables that take you and them, your team, on the path to the big vision. You're Mm. still leading. Mm. So that is still the gift and the skill that you're cultivating. You just probably have to see it and then apply that genius to other areas if you perceive that it's missing for you. Mm. And lastly, in our 10 ways that make you an exceptional entrepreneur from motherhood, number 10 is passion. Yes. So this is the source that carries you, right? This is what gives you energy when you feel like you have none. This is what you keep coming back to when you feel broken. Mm. Yeah. It's what makes you get up another day. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you can't not. Because you can't not because you're in service to this thing, to this, you know, thing that might feel like pie in the sky but that you know in your heart is something that you want to bring to the world. Mm whether that's the business or the offer or the children that you raise, the family experience that you have, the health that you give. Mm. It's the same thing. Yeah, it is the same thing. It really is. And every successful business is built on a really strong why, and that really strong why is passion. Yeah. Because there's a big pain point, because there's a void, because there was something that that person saw in the world or in themselves that they knew in their heart of hearts was not right and it spoke to their soul and their purpose and a fire lit underneath them to be the change of that thing. Mm. Like that is passion. Yeah. And there's no big vision that's achieved without passion because you're going to have to at some point fall back on something that is bigger and more sustaining energetically than the energy that the human has in in 24 hours. Mm. Yeah, because whatever, you know, the source of our energy is what gives us energy. Mm. 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 So knowing that you're not randomly passionate about things and that what you're passionate about is deeply meaningful Mm. and then allowing yourself to really sink into that passion and really feel the why and maybe the pain and the service that you're contributing or want to contribute to humanity to change it to evolve it to bring it forwards to make a better world for your kids like whatever it is 
that the drive comes from the why. The why is often. And if you're feeling tired and thinking, oh, God, what am I passionate about? I feel too tired to connect to that. Then just ask yourself, you know, what is common to all the things I give my time and energy to? What is common to all of the things that I feel inspired to talk about? Because woven within all of those is your passion, is your purpose. Sometimes we just forget. So we hope in this podcast that you have had a really delicious toe dip into contemplating and we hope you let yourself sink into it how profound your everyday experience is for achieving your wildest dreams Mm -hmm. and that the change in the perception of motherhood begins with you yeah so beautiful so if you would like to be in a space that really does reimagine motherhood in ways like this to help you feel inspired and connected to yourself and your parenting, then I invite you to jump into the Reimagining Motherhood membership. You can find out more about that at bridgetwood.life. And what have you got going on, Jules? My online couples workshop experience. I was about to say expectation. (laughs) (laughs) Expectation experience. So what that is, is 12 dates over 12 months. So one date a month guided by me. They're very clear, different topics that we explore with my guidance. You join via a Zoom call and keep your camera off. So it's a totally private experience for you and your partner that you get to do practices and be together in ever evolving intimate ways, asking better quality questions and diving into what is possible for your big vision for your relationship. So it's 12 months of date guidance in the comfort of your own home with me. So you can find out more about that at julietenner.love. And to find out more about all things Nourishing Your Mother, find us on Nourishing Your Mother on Facebook and Instagram and also at nourishingyourmother.com.au. Remember to nourish the woman to rock the family. And we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. Thank you so much for listening. We literally couldn't do this without you. Please share this podcast with anyone you think it would be medicine for. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively into your life, then head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And if you feel like giving back a little to this free content, please rate us on iTunes or Facebook, all of which helps the podcast reach more mamas who need this type of tonic for the soul.